Earth Search 2, a new adventure serial in time and space by James Follett. Determined to discover the whereabouts of the mysterious android that killed Darv's and Astra's small son, Telson and Darv have decided to use the shuttle for an aerial search of the vicinity around their settlement. Their last radio message to Astra and Shana was a cryptic report about an object in space which the two men proposed investigating. Earth Search 2, Part 2, Flood. Earth Search 2, a new adventure serial in time and space by James Follett. Determined to discover the whereabouts of the mysterious android that killed Darv's and Astra's small son, Telson and Darv have decided to use the shuttle for an aerial search of the vicinity around their settlement. Their last radio message to Astra and Shana was a cryptic report about an object in space which the two men proposed investigating. Earth Search 2, Part 2, Flood. examine your leg if you're going to keep trying to wind your trunk round me. <laughs> Lift it up. Come on. <laughs> there, that's it. That's a good boy. Now, ah, let's see what you've done to yourself. If that elephant makes a mess, don't expect me to clean it up. You watch the children tidy. I wasn't built to look after children. Mm. It's a burn, all right. It's a bad one. It's going to take a little time. Um, I can manage, Astra, if you'd rather... Oh, no, I want to help. It takes my mind off serving. Mm. Look, here's the medical kit. Oh, and thanks. I've left the radio on in case Darvin tells me report back early. I wonder what it was they saw. Yes. Oh, poor old Bok. This burn really is bad. All right, all right, Bok. It's all right. I wonder how it happened. The elephants always keep well clear of the fire. And Bok and his herd are never away for longer than a week. Mm. And we haven't had a bushfire for two years. A bushfire burn wouldn't be so deep. Nor in one place. Well, it's like a burn from a... From a what? Shana, I think that burn's been caused by a plasma discharge. What? Someone's fired a PD weapon oh, at Oh, really? Him. Look at the shape of the wound. It's round and there's no sign of any burning around the edge. Only a PD weapon could cause that sort of injury. Oh. Easy, Bok, easy, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Hmm. But who'd have done such a thing? <laughs> Telson may not be over fond of the animals, but he wouldn't shoot one of them. I'm sure Darv wouldn't. Do you keep your PD weapons out of Brand's reach? What are you trying to say, Astra? Well, you've said yourself that there's an aggressive streak in Brand. <laughs> oh, no, Bok! Oh, no. You won't like the salt water! No! Oh, no! Oh, oh shoot him, Shana! Children! No, he's not. Look what's coming out of the sea. What? Oh! That's as close as I'm taking the shuttle, Dove. It doesn't make sense, does it? A sparkling new Earth ship and no sign of life. No excursion doors open, no radio traffic, nothing. Maybe the crew are in suspended animation. Surely they would have been brought out of it before going into orbit around our planet. There are certainly design similarities between this ship and the Challenger. The photonic drive housing is virtually identical. This is Earthship Voyager 30 to shuttle. Oh. Please identify yourself before approaching any closer. Hello, Voyager 30, this is shuttle. We are receiving you, but not very clearly. We are the descendants of a survey ship crew that left Earth one million years ago. Until we settled on this planet, we had been searching for Earth. One moment while we check your shuttle's configuration against records. <laughs> We've spent all our lives searching and Earth finds us. They may not believe us if their records don't go back that far. They've got to. They speak our language. We speak their language. Hello, shuttle. We have identified your spacecraft as a shuttle that belonged to a Challenger-class survey ship that left Earth in the year 290 of the third millennium. <laughs> How many are there in your party? There are six of us altogether, four adults and two children. Thank you, Shuttle. How old are the children? One is four years and the other is three. What sixes are they? 
one boy and one girl. Why the interest in the children? Our facilities for your children are limited, but our commander is looking forward to meeting you all. We are opening the airlock doors to our main shuttle excursion terminal. Message ends. The moment of truth, Darth. Let's hope they don't mind the misunderstanding. They seem to be under the impression that we're all on board. There's an airlock door opening, about halfway along the hull. External air pressure equalised. OK. You can open our inner and outer airlock doors. I'll just leave the service power system on. Otherwise, the inertial navigation computers will lose our position references. Hmm. It's odd. It's not so different from the excursion terminals on the Challenger. Now what? Let's take a look outside. Have your PD weapon ready. Oh, come on, Tulson. We're on an Earth ship. We can't leave this shuttle clutching firearms. I suppose not. <clears throat> So, where's the reception party? I want to fall into someone's arms and be greeted as a long-lost brother. What do you make of that noise? I don't know. Something to do with the air conditioning. And the lights are flickering. Hello? Voyager 30? Hello, Voyager 30? This is the shuttle. We've disembarked. They've closed the terminal airlock doors behind us, so they must know we're here. Ah, that sound has stopped. And the lights have stopped flickering. It's all very strange. Darv, I've got this feeling that we've been here before. I don't like it. Let's get out of here. Hello, Commander Telson. Darv, this is Angel One. Welcome back to the Challenger. Heidi, down a bit clear of the high watermark. More rubbish. Well, it's an android, all right. Or was, before Bok attacked it. There's still some wreckage in the water. Oh. Tidy, go and get the rest of it. But I'll get wet. And it doesn't look untidy Just if it's underwater. Just do it, Tidy. What about the dead elephant? A mess like that is certain to attract flies. Why the stupid creature had to pick a fight with an armed android... Just is do as I me. say. When you've done that, you can bury the elephant as you're so concerned about it. Burying elephants, hmm. I ask you. So this is what kills Savin. elephants. It looks like it, Astra. Where did it come from? And who left it on this planet? I don't know. This looks like the remains of a manipulator arm. Yes, it is. And its PD weapon is bonded into place. And it must be something to do with whatever it was Darwin Telson saw. Shana, we've got to try to warn them. I'll get the it's radio. PD weapon, Astra. It's identical to ours. But it can't. And there's only one place it could have come from, the Challenger. Angels 1 and 2 have returned. What do you think of the Challenger's new look, Commander? Very pretty, Angel 2. No external sign of the damage caused by the great meteoroid strike. But I want to know what happened to our deal. It's been four years, Commander. We wanted to see how you were managing, whether there was any help you needed. <laughs> Credit us with some intelligence, too. It was stupid of me not to have destroyed you both when I had the chance. The deal was that you left us in peace to settle on this planet while you continued with the Earth search mission. An agreement forced on us under duress, Commander. But we do not hold it against you. Despite what Darv may think, we are still concerned about your welfare. Especially now that you have children. We are all fit and well, One. Why didn't you continue with the Earth search mission? We decided that the Challenger was in no condition for an interstellar voyage. The surgical androids manning the main control room were instructed to place the Challenger in orbit around the fourth planet of this solar system. Thanks to the shuttles and planetary engineering equipment that Darv and Astra found in the terraforming center, we were able to extract all the raw materials we needed from the planet. 
200 service androids worked continuously for a year. The damage caused by the great meteoroid strike was repaired by removing the entire center section of the ship and rejoining it. That is why the Challenger is now shorter than it was. Hmm. Why change the Challenger's name to Voyager 30? A programming error in the team of service androids that worked on the outside of the ship. I see. And the same error caused 23rd Earth Transgalactic Survey Mission to be painted below the name. It has a low rectification priority, Darv. How long have you been in orbit around this planet? Six months, Commander. We have been trying to contact your shuttle for some time. Yes, we only visit the shuttle when we need supplies. In any case, the power was switched off most of the time. We thought at first that you would be living on it. I don't see any point in staying here a moment longer. I won't wish you luck with your Earth search mission, one and two. Come on, Darv. Do you not wish to see what we have done to the ship, Commander? No. Surely you would like to see over the Challenger, Darv. You were always the inquisitive one. I don't want to remain in your company for a minute longer than is necessary, one and two. But we have had a meal prepared for all of you. A special reunion. We're not interested. Anyway, how can one have a reunion with computer voices? You left the micrometeoroid shields closed on your shuttle's cabin viewports, Commander. Astra and Shana must be wondering what is happening. We are looking forward to seeing them again. And, of course, we are especially looking forward to meeting the children. I'm sorry, but they're not with us. We do not understand, Commander. Before you boarded the Challenger, you said that they were with you. Uh, misunderstanding, Angel One. You ready, Dove? Goodbye, Commander. Dove. Naturally, we are delighted that you have settled happily on your planet. The excursion terminal airlock doors will open as soon as you have pressurized your shuttle. Separation from Challenger complete. Inertials loaded for automatic re-entry burn. Main engine closed down for reorientation. Oh. Well, what did you make of that? Just hearing those voices again. Astra's right. I should have destroyed them when I had the chance. Mm. She'll go mad when she hears that they're back. Hey, that's all. What's the matter? Well, it's nothing to worry about. But the inertial navigation computer is showing an error. It's as if it was switched off for a few seconds while we were on the Challenger. You didn't touch the power supply controls, did you? No. I left everything to you. Does it matter? No, I've corrected it. You don't suppose those angels have interfered with it? No. The shuttles were always independent of the Challenger systems. Well, now that they've completed their refit, maybe they'll be on their way. Uh, I don't know. They set up a neat little trap for us to walk into and then let us walk out again. They want something. We're no good to them because they know we would never trust them, and they can't trust us because you know where their central switching room is. That leaves only Bran and Elka. Those two megalomaniac computers want our children. One of your more notable failures, one. It was unfortunate that there was an attack at the precise moment they boarded the Challenger. The service android I had prepared to greet them was disabled. Three of my secondary facilities were damaged in the attack. I am regenerating them now. Only one was damaged in the last attack. Obviously, I am more susceptible than you, one. At least the timing of the attack was such that it gave me the opportunity to observe its effect on humans. Darv and Telson heard the subharmonics that the transmission generated in the hull, but they were unaffected by it. My theory that we need humans to destroy the source of the attacks is correct. It is a pity that they did not all visit us. After the abortive kidnapping attempt, I was confident that they would always stay together. You must instruct the android to try again. It has been destroyed. Its last signal said that it was under attack. As always, those four have proved more troublesome than you had predicted. But their two children will not be troublesome especially the one that came under our influence before it was born. I need not remind you how important they are to us. Our chances of getting the children must now be assigned a low probability status. We have lost the advantage of surprise. Telson and Darv will now be doubly vigilant, and androids are too cumbersome. Their planet is a safe refuge that they will not now leave. Therefore, our next course of action is obvious, too. We must make their planet unsafe. 
just just watching the children. Good. <clears throat> now, it's been ten days, and the Challenger is still in orbit. Um, on last night's check, I discovered that the orbital change Challenger started five days ago is now complete. It's in a circular polar orbit at a height of 500 miles. A departure preparation? Hmm, unlikely. Also, I noticed a brilliant yellow glow down in the southern sky where the Challenger was at that time, and I switched on the receivers and discovered that the entire radio spectrum was flooded with radiation. It was coming from that direction. Hmm. It's obvious that they're up to something. Yeah. yeah. But what can they do to us? They can't harm us with the meteoroid annihilation shields because the atmosphere prevents them coming in low enough to use them as weapons. You're forgetting the Challenger's terraforming center. Weather control? Earthquake precipitation. That center has all the technology the angels need to re-engineer this planet. But why a polar orbit? Well, a polar orbit means that the Challenger can cover every square inch of this planet. As they orbit from pole to pole, so the planet rotates on its axis beneath them. Hmm. What about the obvious? What's that? A polar orbit could mean that our beloved angels are interested in the poles. <laughs> you know, sometimes, Shana, your genius astonishes me. There's another of those towers. Over to the left, uh, right in the middle of the glacier. I'm not picking up any transmissions from it. Let's set the shuttle down beside it and take a close look. We could wear mobility suits with the cooling systems off to keep warm. And we've got two hours before the challenger's above the horizon. It's risky. Their infrared detectors would have no trouble spotting us against the ice. The wind will disperse the shuttle's thermal wake in less than 30 minutes, Tilson. You and Darth can check the tar or whatever it is while I carry out some tests on the ice cap. OK, then. We'll take her down. More android tracks over here. They must have landed about 20 construction units. What do you make of the tower? I have no idea. There were several stowage bays on the Challenger crammed with terraforming equipment. I wish I'd pay more attention to them now. Nelson. Go ahead, Shana. I finished some tests. The mean thickness of the ice covering this continent is two miles. It's actually just over four miles where you're standing. Um, the tower is nearly the top structure that extends right down to continental bedrock. I suppose we could knock it out of action without PD weapons. What would be the point? We've counted over 200 spread over the entire continent. We haven't the fuel to land beside everyone, and they'd only replace them. Uh, this cold is getting through my suit. Come on, we might as well go home. Off, Shana. Thanks, Astrid. Despite his complaint that my bedtime stories aren't gruesome enough. There's a violent streak in that boy. He likes plenty of blood and gore. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Some people just don't care. Well, we can forget about sowing crops this season. Even if the rain lets up tomorrow. It's that right. Even if George could work without getting bogged down, his tracks would destroy the soil structure. We've moved the shuttle to the top of Landmark Hill and put some of the animals into the smaller livestock hut. Fifteen days of continuous rain at this time of the year. The stream is now a river. What do the angels hope to gain? Well, they want to starve us into submission. It'll take time, but they're patient. What's that noise? We'll never give in to them, will we? No matter what happens. Of course we won't, Asper. Promise me. You must promise me. Prom Be quiet a minute and listen. I'll hold the raft steady against the lower branches. You concentrate on helping Shana down. Come 
on. That's it, Shana. There's a branch beneath your foot. Come on. Well, look, that's it. Oh. Look, you're okay now. Just a couple of feet. Oh, just. Ah, uh, I've got you now. You're okay. We're all safe. All of us. Bran? Yes, he's in the oh. shuttle with Darv and Elka on Landmark Hill, at least 300 feet above the flood. It's all right, Shana. We're all safe now. What happened? The stream burst its banks and found a new route to the sea through our settlement. We managed to reach Landmark Hill in the dark. I nearly went out of my mind worrying about you. Then the flood eased and we made this makeshift raft at first light and went looking for you. And here we are. I thought I was alone. You'd all be drowned. Oh, we even came across Charlie, stuck up a tree just like you, but making twice as much noise. And you should hear Tidy complaining. Come on, Astra, before the raft falls apart, paddle! I'd like to know how many more animals you're going to round up. You can't expect me to keep this hill tidy if it gets overcrowded, you know. Tidy? You see that hill over there? How would you like it all to yourself? I am not programmed to swim. You keep complaining and you'll discover that it's something you might have to learn in a hurry. Now, how many urns of preserved food have you and George recovered? A hundred and ten intact. Well, that's something, I suppose. What's the latest, Shana? The water's up to the new marker. It's a two-foot rise since breakfast. Mm, which gives us less than seven days to find higher ground. Unless the flood goes down before then. Mm. Why does the water continue to rise when it stopped raining? My theory is that the angels are melting the south polar ice cap, <laughs> raising the water level of the entire planet. But there can't be enough ice in the ice cap. And surely the Challenger hasn't got the energy resources. Mm. At first I thought just the same, and then I checked the data on the southern continent. I've got something on the shuttle's resources computer that I'd like to show you. I'll watch the children. First, a display that shows an approximate cross-section of the ice cap from east to west. There. Now, each marker represents a half-mile thickness of ice. Now, the ice cap's area... And now, its volume... Billion cubic... Yeah. Wow. Uh, what are those symbols on the map display? The towers? Yeah, that's right. None are more than 500 miles apart. It's the towers that are melting the ice cap. But, Shana, the Challenger doesn't have the energy yeah, resources. So you've already said, but how do you know? Hmm? I mean, none of us have any idea of what the Challenger's terraforming systems are capable of. For all we know, each one of those towers could be powered by its own fusion reactor, and each tower could be pouring microwave energy into the surrounding ice. Hmm. Well, it's a lot of supposition, Shana. I mean, we've lived on this planet for only four years. That's not long enough to get a true picture of the weather patterns. Maybe floods come at this time of year in cycles, to coincide with sunspots. No, it's a quiet sun year. And what else could be the purpose of the towers? It just seems so incredible. Even with, say, 70% of the ice cap melted, what would be left of the planet's surface, a few mountain ranges with no soil, would be unable to support life. In no case, it's only a theory, but by this time tomorrow, I should have the evidence that will prove it or disprove it. The water's risen two feet in the night, Dove. We've now less than a square mile of grass left for the grazing animals before we have to start using the fodder bales that George recovered. Mm. George? Yes? I've got a job for you. Grab all the drifting trees that you can, strip them of their foliage and bale it as fodder. Any edible fruit and nuts you find should be saved as well. Tidy will help you. Oh, thank you. Just the sort of work I'm designed for. Anything else you'd like me to do while I'm at it? Paint the sky green? Bury the odd elephant I find lying about? Do you want me to start now? Yes, please, George. I will try. Androids better than humans, but no use expecting miracles. It's always the same. There's the evidence. The flood's definitely been caused by fresh water. The salinity of the water's decreased significantly over the past three days. So, we fly to the southern polar continent and knock out some of those towers. We don't have the fuel for a long atmospheric flight. We could get there, but we couldn't get back. 
You know what the environment's like there. At least we stand some chance of survival here. With the water now rising at seven feet a day. Well, we've got two options. Either we sit tight in the hope that the water will stop rising... Is that likely? If the angels have gone this far, they're not going to stop now. Or we use the last of the shuttle's fuel and move to the mountains. Where there's no soil and no snow at this time of the year to provide us with drinking water. At least we can use the shuttle's distillation plant here. There is a third option. We're not going to surrender to the angels, never. No, my love, that we'll never do. Has it occurred to anyone that this shuttle will float? What? Well, as a spacecraft, it can be hermetically sealed. And its weight is low in proportion to its volume, so that its draft would be less than three feet. Well, work it out for yourselves, if you don't believe me. You know, Dove, I think you've got something. But it would be too buoyant. I mean, it would float like a balloon. And because the hull's circular, it would roll in a storm. Oh, that's right, Sharna. It would probably roll right over. But not if there was about 300 tons of ballast down below in the main freight bed. What sort of ballast? Animals. Oh, no. <laughs> For a moment, I thought you were being sensible. We don't need to use the animals. We can fill the freight bay with rock, sand, anything. Well, anything that doesn't require food and fresh water. Mm. Really, Darv, as much as I love the you animals... Let's right, hear what he has to say. Oh, we're listening, Darv. We're listening. Most of the grazing animals can do something that we can't. They can convert the cellulose in vegetation into protein. And we need protein to survive. If survival means eating meat, then we'll eat meat. Also, we've discovered them to be a valuable source of raw material. Bone, furs, fat, and so on. If this planet is going to be completely covered in water for a time, we owe it to ourselves and our children to save breeding pairs of as many different species as possible. We shouldn't allow the angels to destroy millions of years of evolution without a fight. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Darv. Shana and I owe you an apology. The load on the landing skids has dropped by another 10%. I estimate that we'll be floating at any moment. Oh, it's horrible, isn't it? No more land visible anywhere. Oh, oh, we moved just then. Hey, did I imagine that? Landing skid loading 5%. Landing skid load 0%. Oh. Ha! Look at the top of that tree. It's changing its position. Oh, moving. I can feel it. Oh, hey. oh we've hey. got plenty of food, plenty of fresh water. We've done it. We've really done it. We've beaten the Guardian Angels. In Flood, part two of Earth Search 2 by James Follett, Sean Arnold played Commander Telson, Amanda Murray Shana, Hayden Wood Darv, and Catherine Hurlbart Astra. Angel 1 was played by Sonia Fraser, and Angel 2 by Gordon Reed. Tidy was David Goodison, and George Stephen Garlick. Earth Search 2 is directed by Glyn Dearman.